show. Good. I was going to say good afternoon. I'm not sure it is afternoon. It is in two seconds. Not sure what this is. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us on short notice. I'm joined uh, to my right by Deputy Commissioner Joe Bertoni from the Department of Transportation, uh, the President uh, immediately to my left of the Board of Public Utilities, Christine Sadovi, and to her left, the Deputy State Director of Emergency Management, Lieutenant Colonel Chris DeMays. I bring greetings from both Colonel Pat Callahan and Commissioner Diane gutierrez Scacchetti. Pat, sadly, is delivering a eulogy, and Diane is feeling under the weather. Um, Joe, Christine, and Chris will be able to share the specific preparations that they and their teams are undertaking in anticipation of this storm, but, we, but know, please, that we are all ready for whatever comes our way and taking every precaution, although it is Mother Nature. So we do our very best to calculate, predict, and prepare uh, but you have to accept the fact that it is Mother Nature. So based on the latest reports, we are predicting a potential 6 to 10 inches of snow in the northwestern portion of the state, and that would be especially Sussex and Warren counties. There's also a potential for minor, minor uh, coastal flooding. This is the national, I don't normally bring this with me, but this is the National Weather Service map as of this morning. And the blue uh, is going to be entirely, if not nearly entirely, snow. The pink is a wintry mix, could go one way or the other. And then the green is uh, a rain event. And that could be, you know, th that could be fluid to some extent, but that's sort of the, the nature and path of the storm as we see it today. Uh, as Chris will probably discuss, our State Emergency Operations Center will begin activating to a level three enhanced monitoring from 6 p.m. this evening until 6 p.m. tomorrow. And we will continue to monitor this storm for any resource requests or assistance needed by counties or municipalities. As I mentioned, it is likely that the southern half to two-thirds of the state will only see rain. Ironically, we were monitoring a camera in Camden County, was that? just now, uh, where there's, there are some snowflakes, but temperatures look not, not really any accumulation. Temperatures are going to move such that this will be rain uh, almost entirely in the south. Uh, between 6 o'clock this evening and sort of in the middle of the night, 2 a.m.-ish, um, we're predicting the most heavy precipitation. Uh, and again, this pink part of the map sort of more central into the southwestern part of the state could change from just rain to a wintry mix, which, by the way, can make roads very dangerous. Heavy snow, obviously, could also lead to rapidly deteriorating conditions, including flooding. So I would just say this, and my guesses will all say this, don't go out unless you need to go out. Stay off the roads. One of the utilities with whom I was in touch earlier to today said their biggest concern is not necessarily precipitation of snow, rain, or heavy winds, but it is their ability to move their equipment around with other folks out on the road. Um, so again, please don't go out unless you have to go out. Again, we're expecting the most intense part of this storm to be finished by daybreak uh, tomorrow. If you're traveling down the New Jersey Turnpike Corridor or the I-295 Corridor, there will likely be a bit of snowfall overnight. And for those of you on the coast, again, the storm appears to be shaping up to be mostly rain. Commercial vehicle travel restrictions will be put in place as of 2 p.m. today on the entire length, and Joe will correct me if I don't get this exactly right, on the entire length of I-78, I-80, I-280, and I-287, as well as on NJ Route 440 from the Outer Bridge Crossing uh, as it connects into I-287. Excluded from that will be the Turnpike, the Parkway, and the Atlantic City Expressway. As it relates to the commercial travel restrictions, I want to give a shout out to our partners in Pennsylvania who have been from day one 
in our administration, great partners as we coordinate. Sometimes if you're not coordinating, you get unintended consequences. If we do one move, it might spill uh, problems into them, and if they do a move, vice versa, they have been terrific. Again, if you must travel, and please don't travel in those hours unless you have to, please let the state, county, and local road crews do their jobs, whether they're treating or plowing the roads. Our highway crews especially work in formation. So if you see a road crew getting into position or working, please, please, please let them have the road ahead of you unimpeded. The Department of Transportation has also been coordinating with NJ Transit, the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, the toll road authorities, and our regional partners, as I mentioned, Pennsylvania especially, to ensure everyone's on the same page. With any storm, as Christine will address, there is always the potential for power outages. If you lose power, report it to your utility immediately. Don't assume that somebody else will. If you see a down power line, please stay clear of it and, again, call it in. We have not had this happen. I'm knocking on wood in several years, but early in our administration, we had several fatalities of folks who went, drove across or went near down power lines. Please do not do that. Please remain mindful that while our electric utilities will try to restore power as quickly as possible, weather conditions at any given moment, especially high winds, could prevent utility crews from getting up in a bucket safely. Christine uh, is at the front lines of this, but I've communicated with the senior folks at uh, JCPNL, PSENG, and Atlantic City Electric just to go over their preparations. We thank everyone in advance who is going to be on call and working during this storm to keep our state safe. The Department of Transportation, partner authorities and agencies, county and local crews, utility crews, police, especially the state police, fire, EMTs, and every first responder. The Office of Emergency Management will post regular updates, and this is the website that I always suggest folks go to ready.nj.gov. Ready.nj.gov is an all-encompassing um, homepage. Uh, and they'll also post on the respective social media channels. We'll also post updates on our official state channels, including at NJGov on X. With that, please help me welcome the Deputy Commissioner of the Department of Transportation, Joe Bertoni. Joe? Thank you, Governor. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Joe Bertoni. I'm the Deputy Commissioner of the New Jersey Department of Transportation. I would like to assure you that the New Jersey Department of Transportation and its partner transportation agencies, the New Jersey Turnpike Authority, South Jersey Transportation Authority, and New Jersey Transit are well prepared for today's winter weather events. In preparation of the storm, the New Jersey Department of Transportation brined all of the state and interstate highways in Huntington County and in all of the state and interstate highways in counties north of Interstate 78. We are pushing out appropriate winter driving messages on all of our variable message signs and through our social media platforms. Our regional operations centers, as well as the statewide traffic management center here in Woodbridge, are activated and fully staffed. The department and its partner transportation agencies have more than sufficient amounts of salt and liquid calcium on hand for this event. And between the New Jersey Department of Transportation and our contractor forces, we will deploy approximately 1,800 pieces of equipment to clear the snow. Between the New Jersey uh, Turnpike Authority and Garden State Parkway, um, over 700 pieces of equipment will be deployed. We, of course, ask that you not drive, but if you absolutely have to be on the road, please proceed with extreme caution and be mindful of our snowplow trains. With respect to New Jersey Transit, New Jersey Transit will be running its regular weekend schedule. The safety of our customers is our top priority. Anyone planning to travel on New Jersey Transit during the storm is urged to allow extra time and to be extremely careful traveling in and around stations and on platforms. Thank you very much, and I ask that you drive safely. Thank you, Joe. Well done. Um, thank you, Joe, again. Um, and please now help me welcome, uh, pinch hitting for the superintendent, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Chris DeMays. Chris, come on down. Good to have you, man. Thank you, Governor. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of the Colonel, 
Uh, we had a call yesterday with the National Weather Service, our county emergency management coordinators, and our state partners to ensure that we're prepared for any response measures that we may need to take. Uh, the weather we're anticipating, as the governor mentioned, uh, will be confined primarily to the northwestern corridor as far as snow, and then south of that and east will be, of course, rainfall. Uh, we have win winter weather warnings posted uh, through NWS from Morris County, Sussex County, Warren County, and Western Bergen, and we can anticipate 6 to 10 inches of snow in those areas with up to an inch an hour. As mentioned, our State Emergency Operations Center will be activated throughout the event to support any resource requests and information needs of our stakeholders. We highly recommend our partners contact NJ211 uh, for any warming center information should they need to take care of homeless individuals, et cetera. Uh, visit 511NJ for any road conditions prior to any travel if you do need to go out, but as we uh, suggest, please stay home if possible. Uh, visit readynj.nj.gov, as the governor mentioned, for any preparedness-related information, such as developing a plan or a kit for your home or for your vehicle, uh, should you have to travel. Avoiding travel at this time frame allows our DOT partners uh, to clear those roads and make them safe. But if you must travel, allow extra time on the commute. And this process, uh, as we mentioned before, can be slow as they clear the roadways to make them safe for travel. Reference the move over law. NJ 39-4-92.0, if first responders are on the shoulder, move over one lane if possible. If it's not possible, make sure you slow down in a manner enough that they can safely perform their duties. And again, this doesn't only apply to the first responders, but also those maintenance workers, tow companies that are trying to make the roads safe. Lastly, uh, make sure you're checking on loved ones throughout the event, in particular the elderly. Make sure that they're reporting power outages, as my colleague will talk about in a minute. Uh, and take heed that because this type of snowfall can lead to overexertion of our citizens while they're clearing their sidewalks and driveways. Uh, as we've come to know our New Jersey residents, you know, look out for one another throughout this event. And as uh, Commissioner uh, Gutierrez Cachetti always says, make sure everybody gets home safe. Thank you. Well said, Chris. Thank you, man. Uh, amen to that. And I think it's fair to say you, know, you have sort of, broadly speaking, two types of snow, light, fluffy, and heavy and wet, this is going to be in the latter category uh, based on what we're sensing. So that, that makes the extra uh, underline on that. Keep out an eye out for your neighbors, particularly somebody who's shoveling who may not, uh, who sh perhaps should not be. So there are moments when I miss Sheila uh, Oliver, our Lieutenant Governor, and Joe Fiordaliso. Sheila, I'm preparing my State of the State address for next Tuesday. And I'm reflecting with a heavy heart on the fact Sheila won't be there. And it's at these uh, press conferences, particularly for storms, where I know Christine joins me in missing uh, with a heavy heart our former colleague, Joe Fiordaliso. But we have an extraordinary president of the Board of Public Utilities. Please help me welcome Christine Sadovi. Pleasure. Thank you. Thanks, Governor. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, BPU is in regular communication with all four of the state's electric utilities regarding storm preparation and response. We'll continue to be in contact with all of the utilities during and after the storm to ensure that they are working to restore power outages as quickly as possible. All the utilities are holding crews throughout the next 24 to 48 hours. Orange and Rockland Electric, where we expect the highest possible impacts from the storm, has requested mutual aid personnel and additional contractors to address any outages. As I said, restoring power outages as quickly and safely as possible is our number one priority. If you are experiencing an outage, as the governor mentioned, please don't assume your neighbors have called. Contact your utility and report the outage. Remember to charge your electronic devices, particularly your cell phones, so that you can make that call in the event of an outage or an emergency. As the governor has said, we are expecting the potential for high winds, which can cause downwires. Assume downwires are live, say at least 30 feet away, and call 911 to report. Those winds can make restoration more difficult, and utility crew safety is paramount. Please, we ask for your patience if your power is out, as utility crews are working as quickly as possible to restore your power. We understand the importance of getting power back on quickly, especially in these winter months when heat is essential. So in closing, remember, charge your phone so that if you have an outage, you can call and report it. Stay away from those downed wires. 
Please stay safe and if possible, stay off the roads. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. Thank you. Well said and thank you all, Joe and Chris and Christine. We'll take any quick questions you've got, please. At the moment, no, but that's an option we always leave on the table if we deem it necessary. Paramount Garg is with us, and I think that's sort of the, the posture that we're in. Um, it's partly due to the fact that this is, we think, again, this is Mother Nature. So you, what, every time you think you've got to figure it out, uh, it, takes, it, it, it can always take a turn, uh, but that's an option that we'll leave on the table. And comment on the weekend part of this, less Yeah. A great point, and uh, and I wanted to make that earlier. So thank you for teeing up the uh, 70 mile an hour fastball. Um, uh, we are blessed that this is a weekend event, um, and and it's not a holiday, so you're not you don't have a lot of folks traveling to visit families. Uh, it's another reason to underscore. Not only do we want you to stay off the roads, it should be a lot easier for more folks to stay off the roads. Obviously, you've got essential workers, you've got folks who work weekends. We get that. Um, but if you don't have to be out, don't go out. Thank you. Uh, this is to address the don't have to go out. The Devils are at home tonight. That is right along that 78 corridor. Is there any concern in terms of when that team is letting out, what it looks like at the transit? You know, Essex County right now is in this pink phase that I showed you uh, a short while ago. Uh, I think we're okay. Um, uh, Obviously, as we get closer, that's something we're going to monitor. Um, Joe, I know, and his and Diane is the chair of of NJ Transit. That's something they'll be they'll be on top of. You got the Giants playing the Eagles tomorrow. That feels like it's going to be outside the band of the storm. Um, a little bit more into the mix uh, in terms of location, but we'll monitor it. Um, good win by them beating the Blackhawks. By the way, just to get that off my chest. Anyone else? Again, folks, uh, be safe. Don't assume others are doing, making calls, particularly on power outages, down lines, don't go near them. If you can stay off the road, stay off the road. To Chris's good suggestion, uh, keep an eye out for your neighbors, particularly the elder, elderly and the infirmed. Uh, and again, a very good tee up. The fact that this is a weekend gives us latitude that we wouldn't have if it were a storm uh, in, uh, during the week. So again, I want to thank Joe Bertoni, Lieutenant Colonel Chris DeMays, and President uh, Christine Sadovi for their leadership uh, and uh, participation today. Thank you, folks.